hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel thank you for 57 subscribers super excited i found this hi darlings welcome back to my channel to our channel so okay i was out and then when i came home it was quite early it is quite early and i was like let me record let me record for my peoples let me give them some content or some need to watch and the lighting is not serving guys i look cute <gasps> ah. anyways you already know get your glass get your drink and let's get right into it fyi it is non-alcoholic i'm not an alcoholic if i must say but anyways amazing stuff thank you so much for 57 subscribers guys this is today is today is wednesday and i was supposed my target was to have 50 subscribers by friday so thank you guys for having it before friday i feel so accomplished it's such a small step but i really feel accomplished so thank you to everyone who subscribed thank you to everyone who liked my video and as you can see today by the title down below i don't know if i'm gonna have it down below but by the title down below you can see that today is a is another get to know me better but this time i'm telling you what i want you to know about me and then it's also like an intro to how i ended up in the children's home at least my perspective of how i think i ended up in the children's home or what i know how i ended up in the children's home or in the orphanage basically so my name is Kimberly Apollos. I'm a student at NAS studying economics. Um, I'm a baker, semi self taught baker. I really love baking, so I'm an entrepreneur. I have a cash loan. I sell dresses, I sell clothes. I'm really into my entrepreneurial side. What I would actually love to do in the future, the near future, I would love to have an adoption agency. Um, yes i'd love to have an adoption agency growing up i always wanted to be a social worker honestly between me and you i don't even know how i ended up studying economics Umbella, maybe this is why i'm not even done but you know we move we move we literally we move anyways i hope you're having i hope you are having something to wet your throat because this is going to be interesting Yes, I'm 24 years old, might not look it, might not act it sometimes. Sometimes I act older, sometimes I act really, really young. But I'm just a little 24 year old with a little heart. <laughs> yes, I'm 24 years old, grew up in a children's home, hashtag of an age, like you all like calling it, but we call it children's home. I went to amazing kids private school. I think I was there for like a good eight to nine years shout out amazing kids <laughs> yes i went to amazing kids private school i'm a seventh day adventist i go to church on saturdays i love my church family and they love me too whether you like it or not you love me um what else Umbella? what else oh i have a i have a person my person i don't know what i should call him my boyfriend my fiance i'm so used to saying my boyfriend but i have a fiance I have a nephew that I semi semi raise. Yeah, I love him. I have a daughter, Rebecca. I'll tell you about her in the future. But yeah, she's one years old. The cutest little thing in the world. I have nephews and, and a niece. But I'm very close with my one nephew because I practically love with him. Huh. Yeah, that's what I want you to know about me. So now that we have foundation that who Kimberly is, what Kimberly does now let's dive into how Kimberly ended up in an orphanage like it's like how guys you know a lot of people are shocked literally are shocked when I got a not notification for business so I'm so tempted to stop and respond but I'm not because you guys are important a lot of people are so shocked when I tell them I grew up in an orphanage I don't know why I honestly don't know why they're shocked but yes i grew up in an orphanage um ever since i was six years old 
is since I was six years old. That's how I ended up in the orphanage. Whew, it's a lot to unpack, guys. Six years is like a long time ago, so it's really, really a lot to unpack. But long story short, we used to live with my mom and my dad. My mom became sick and she passed away. So when my mom passed away, I have five siblings. We were five siblings. So when my mom passed away, I was six. Yeah? So if I use a lot of apparently, it's because I do not know the facts. I just rely on what I was told and on what I saw and observed. So apparently when my mom passed away, she said that her kids cannot be separated. And for hands, we are five. We are one, two, three, four, five. Um, so no auntie, no uncle, no grandmother, grandfather could apparently afford to take five kids this was a coward so one of my smart aunties special aunties shout out to you homegirl made an appointment with ministry of gender and i remember this one time i will never forget this day i think it was before we went to the children's home because i was six so i don't really know what like my older siblings were discussing with like my aunts and so forth so they were like rumors now the kids are going to an orphanage and i remember we went like i don't know if it was to court or something but i remember coming out and my brother lashed out at my auntie's like yeah you lied to us you said we're not gonna go there. or something like that i re that's like that's like one part i remember long story short we went to the meeting and Found myself in the children's home, the Namibian children's home to be exact, situated in Eros, that's where I grew up. And question might be, why didn't your father take you guys? Why couldn't your father? So, apparently, okay, not apparently, according to my understanding, my mom was the breadwinner. So basically, we lived with my dad, like my dad would take care of us, no, no, no. And my father, at the, he didn't have a job, that's number one. I think he was a refugee also so he really at the time but I know later on he got his citizenship but at the time I think he was a refugee so he also didn't like have his his papers straight and all that and I think he couldn't also just afford to single-handedly take care of five kids but I know for a fact it was also against his will. He didn't want us to go to an orphanage. That was like, I know, I that I know about my father. He didn't want us to go. Like if it meant he had to struggle with us and fight with us and fend for us, he would have done it. That I know. So it was like, it was like everyone was against him. He was alone here because he didn't have family here. And my mom's family, they, they knew what was best for us. So orphanage, it was and in the orphanage long story short we used to go for weekends to my father i remember like the first week sorry for like mixing the first week of the orphanage my sister my older sister she's late now she didn't go to school she didn't go to school for that first week so like after the first week when she started going to school like the first day when she had to go to school, I was crushed. I felt like everyone is abandoning me. And I remember because like the house, it's like up a hill. I used to say like up the hill and the gate was like down. So I remember that morning my sister was walking down because she was taking taxi or she was walking to school. One of the two because she went to a, um, a school in Eros. So I was following her and I was like, I'm going with you. You're not leaving me. I'm going with you. And she was like, just walking because she knows in the, the security guards are not going to let me go with them. So walking, walking, when we got to the security guards and she left, I was crying. And it was like 6 a.m. I was crying, 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 crying. And we were just there for like a week. So I think around 8, the social worker came. Now the social worker. <laughs> Guys, forgive me for this part there, but I was ready to be like, to move on to the next chapter. Anyways, when the social worker came, she's, she's a white lady. I'm not going to mention her name, but she was a white lady. Yeah, white lady. So she comes and she's like, 
in those days we couldn't speak africans i couldn't speak africans i don't know about my siblings but i couldn't speak africans because i grew up in a predominantly english house like we would just speak english at home so the social worker came and she's like this is our child this is this is our child right this this making this like she would refer to the kids as her kids so i thought is the auntie confused like she doesn't know what she gave birth to and does she want to like take me so i can be hers and she's like you are you are my child right you are my child and i'm like i know in my head i'm not your child but this is white it's probably money i don't know why i was thinking of these things at six years old so it's like mm -hmm. i'm your child mm -hmm. auntie the lady <laughs> means i belong to the children was i not disappointed she just meant like i belong to the children's home okay long story short uh she calls my house mother my house mother comes and picks me up and i was scolded guys i was scolded and i was like six i just didn't understand what was happening like it was a big lifestyle change for me that happened like boom like one minute your mom is there one minute she's not there the next minute you're in a children's home you're not sleeping with your father in the house you're not sleeping you know it's like you mixed with other kids and these were things like i wasn't used to i wasn't you because i don't think i did a lot of sleepovers as a child it's probably to my aunt and they were not really kids so i wasn't used to the fact that with other kids and and what pissed me off is that in my house, I was Mr. Baby. Hella. Gala. When I went to the orphanage, I wasn't the baby anymore. So no one treated me like the baby because they were now other kids. They were younger than me. They were other kids that had more needs. So it was like, it was so, everything just happened so fast. you like, you need to grow up so fast, instantly. Like, I remember this one time when I started grade one. We got homework and homegirl my house mother wasn't into those jokes of come on bring out homework let's do homework no and i didn't know i was young there was no one to to to, to tell me that no when you come from school we do homework so no one asked and just to go back to school on the next day she's like homework out i was like at our house we don't do homework <laughs> she thought i was being disrespectful but I was actually just being honest. I was saying at our house, we really don't do homework. No one asks for homework. But apparently, I was supposed to go tell my house mother that I had homework. And I didn't know that. So, I got a hiding. And then, yeah, I started doing homework here and there. But anyways, like, I have a lot of children's home orphanage experiences. But I think I'm just going to stop here. Because, like, 12 minutes. I don't want to keep you guys so long. I'm just going to stop the and yeah and say that there's a lot to come i'm gonna unpack a lot a lot of emotions but today for today i felt comfortable telling you how i ended up at the children's home so tomorrow i might not tomorrow literally but like the next time we are together having some drinks i might give you a little insight i will give you not i might I will give you a little insight of life in the children's home. How I grew up, how I kept my sanity, how I made sure to make sure that I'm not going to turn out a bum, how I made sure that I am who I am today, honestly. Honestly, I feel like I give credit where credit is due. So for me, who made me me is number one, my church my church played a very big role in helping me keep my morals or teaching me morals because no one taught me morals at six years old my, my parents didn't teach me morals at six years old so my church played a role my church family really really played a <laughs> i look cute though <laughs> okay anyways my church family really played a big role in keeping me sane keeping me grounded because i had a lot of examples i made a lot of church friends so i would look at how their parents raised them and what is expected of them and compare with what is happening in the children's home because at the children's home there was a lot of 
teenage pregnancy a lot of dropouts and i didn't really make friends at the children's home i didn't really have a lot of friends they're those that we grew up with that you will say yeah that's my sister but friends friends of me saying uh, okay i had like two or three yen there but not really so yeah the church literally raised me in certain aspects because i block oh <gasps> sorry i literally block what i don't want so at the, at the children's home if i saw that mm, i'm so sorry for these funny expressions that i'm making like this one i don't know why this ugly expression comes on when i talk but pray for it anyways so i block out things i feel i don't want to know so i did that a lot at the children's home and even at church if i feel like then i block <laughs> i block that out so but anyways i give credit where it's due shout out to my church windwick south shout out to amazing kids too like i had a lot of aunt we call them aunties at school but a lot of teachers there who were very kind and who were really really invested shout out to auntie sheila guys until today homegirl is still in my life but like i had a lot of teachers and aunties that were really invested in my life and would give me like pep talks and say you're gonna make it you will make it you have to make it you know sometimes because of statistics name the you see now i'm going in deeper but anyways because of statistics the worst is always expected from us we're not expected to finish school we're expected to fall pregnant by the age of 16 19 between they were expected to fall pregnant we're not expected to speak up for ourselves we should consider ourselves privileged for being in the children's home a lot is not expected of us but the worst is expected of us so i think i surpassed the unexpected because um like in the house i was in when i was grade, grade 10 i entered that house in that grade grade 8 that house she had other kids like the house mother had other kids but i was literally her first to ever finish grade 10 i was her first to ever finish grade 12 and i was her first and most likely her last to ever make it to varsity do you see, you see these basic basic things are not expected from us so like i don't know it's not an easy place growing up that i'll tell you it has its perks it has its upsides it's one of the, the it's one of like the best when you consider like accommodation free things one of the best orphanages but personally i don't feel a child should grow up in an orphanage that is, i honestly don't want to go deep into this because who you just see my channel and be like that's if you're a kimberly me i guess not after i'll find the face i'm joking <laughs> but yeah, i don't want to go deep into this i'm just saying i don't feel like oh it's not time <laughs> i don't feel like children should grow up in a children's home in an orphanage especially because it's rough but anyways tell me what you want to know about the orphanage down in the comments below and i'll give you insight um i think my next my next video i'm probably gonna do an experience like an ex i, I don't even want to exaggerate and be like oh, a horrible experience because i've had a lot of horrible experience i have tough skin guys there was there were so many disgusting things said about me and you know sometimes i felt like i should succumb to them like i should prove them i can do it but i was like mm, i don't want to do that <laughs> i'm not that girl i'm not part of those things so anyways thank you for being this far into the video please let me know if you enjoyed this story time yeah this is kind of like a story time like this in depth i don't know how i ended up at 19 minutes but yeah please let me know if you enjoyed this and if you'd really like to learn more about the children's home and how i made it out normal i think i'm semi-normal yes i suffer with a little bit of depression i suffer with a little bit of anxiety but i actually feel like i'm normal because personally i feel like i've achieved small small like i've achieved so let me know what you would want to know yeah 
story times more on my life in the chosen and also don't think i'm insensitive because you see me laughing right now when i say when i tell you a story most of the times i laugh now because back then i would cry i would really really cry but now i'm so over it and i think i'm also at a point where i understand people's characters and i'm just like because i'm old and i'm mature now and i'm just like oh, i would actually react to this how stupid of me or I'll be like who oh, guys there was this lady she's still there and like oh It was unhealthy it wasn't like yo if you only knew the kimberley children's home guys i was such a disrespectful little child but i was disrespectful for my survival because if i was respectful i wasn't gonna make it up i'm so sorry and i'm not telling no child to be disrespectful but sometimes we need to do what's best for us and me being disrespectful to homegirl was honestly best for me watching bye please like subscribe and comment down below and thank you to all the little lovely girls who commented on oh guys my hair who commented on my other video oh you guys you guys gave me big head ne? big can you see i think it even grew like an inch but thank you guys see you in my next video oh please do follow me on the socials instagram especially i do a lot of q a serious topics i do a lot of uncomfortable not a lot i want to do a lot of uncomfortable topics like get them off the table let's talk about these things so i ask a lot of questions on instagram and you guys thumbs up you're very responsive i love that i love that we can interact though i don't respond most of the times it's because i want to create content and i want to see where if our thinking capabilities are at the same place also guys i do not know why the lighting bella decided hey, hand and i hope my sound is good bye darlings see you in my next video